before we go to frequently, maybe we'll discuss the frequently asked questions for now. Um, because this is like a general question that we normally receive. Um, so I'll just go through these three questions before we move on to the to the panel um, members later on, okay? For question and answer portion. So first question here, um, I'm on dual citizenship, can I apply for Australian World Scholarship? So I, I believe I discussed this one earlier. So again, you just need to have a proof of um, your citizenship as, a, as an FSM citizen, and you'll be able to be eligible to apply for the scholarship. Okay. And second one, we heard that once we completed your studies under the Australia Awards, you must return to FSM and serve the country for two years. Um, yes, this is correct. This is what we call scholarship bond. Um, so after um, you completed your studies, we encourage the students to come back um, to their home country or to their home state and serve uh, you know, um, the country for two years, at least two years. Okay? This is something that you have to think about because, of course, um, the Australian government supports um, the, the, the students like you, and of course this is your, you know, your return or your contribution to, you know, to your country also after you completed your studies, okay? All right, third question. I have completed two years of college in the U.S. Can I apply for Australia Awards scholarships? So, again, we're not, um, we're not saying that you cannot, but again, on the eligibility criteria it says you have to have an equivalent of two years college experience. So if you study two years college experience in the U.S., make sure to have that proof um, and submit it together with your application. Okay? All right. Okay, so we move on to the exciting part of the program, which is, you know, we have, of course, the honor to have the Australia Awards alumni to um, answer some questions. Um, of course, you, in the audience, we also have some pressing questions to be asked to the alumni. And then later on also, we're going to give out some of our merch, some of the, you know, Australia Awards mer merch uh, that will be, you know, you can enjoy later on. All right, so without further ado, maybe call on our um, alumni to be in the front. So we have again Mr. Christopher Sikra. <laughs> Um, AAPS 2019 intake, and then we have Mr. Harold Pritchett moving um, the 2022 intake, and of course we have Dr. Lucille Abis Overhoff. Um, so she's actually under ADAP or Australian International Development Assistance Bureau Scholarship Program, which is now the Australia Awards. Um, it's 1998 to 1998 intake. Please give a round of applause to our alumni. Ladies and gentlemen, and I'll hand it over the mic to Rochelle. Um, so she's gonna um, ask some of the initial questions, and then later on, we'll give it to the audience the opportunity. Okay? Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Rowan. That was really great. Um, so we're gonna start with a chance to um, ask some really important questions of our panel members. Um, I should actually just quickly plug that we're about 9,800 9, followers. We're trying to make it to 10,000. Uh, so here's your chance to help us out. Um, I think we'll probably have a winner for the last person that hits 10,000. So just letting, letting everyone know that. <laughs> Um, so I think uh, uh, just to start with, I think I'll, uh, I'll hand over the mic to each of our uh, alumni to introduce themselves and talk briefly about their, uh, what, what you studied while you were abroad, where you studied and why. Uh, and then, yeah, we'll, we'll launch into the next questions. All right, I'll hand this over. <laughs> So just about what I do now. Yeah, just introduce yourself, um, what you studied, what degree, which university. Can you hear me from your back? Yes. Oh, I tomorrow my daughter is here, Jane. I was at Dutch of Dan, Jane message. Sorry, I have to do that. Yep, please. Respect. 
Okay, so um, my name is Misty Abis Obrahov. I'm from the Outer Island. I'm from Finland, Born Bay. Um, and um, I studied at the Australian Maritime College in uh, Tasmania, Australia. And it's part of the University of Tasmania. Um, so I studied, I did a Bachelor of Applied uh, Science in Fisheries Technology. Because what I was thinking of, uh, and I think this is important for you, I was looking at uh, Micronesia, what, what is it that we have, what is it that we need? And I knew that we have more ocean than land. So that's why I decided to focus on fisheries technology, because that's our most important resource, the biggest uh, important resource. But then after that, <laughs> I, I saw that fisheries is not enough. We need to look at the environment, it's not enough. So that's why I went back to the University of New South Wales in Sydney and I did my master's uh, uh, in uh, environmental science, so yeah. So it's important when you're looking at your uh, field that you look at how it's gonna help your country. Not how it's gonna help me, but my country, yeah? So that's important. So. Of course, it's important to apply, but it's like marriage, you know, you have to find the right fit, because it's for life. <laughs> you have to be loyal and faithful to the <laughs> career that you choose, because it's for life, yeah? So, yeah, so that's when you, before you even apply, you think about that. You know, what is it that I want to spend the rest of my life doing? Because that's what it is, that's your job, is your partner for life, apart from your spouse. Yeah, so, yeah, so right now, I, well, I went and worked for the national government, and then I worked for SPREP, which is the regional uh, headquarters for uh, environment in the Pacific. Yeah. So right now, what I'm doing now is I'm the assistant secretary for climate change, and I have a few seconds to encourage you to please <laughs> take a career in climate change, because Climate change is a cross-cutting issue. It's impacting our lives, everything in our lives. Sorry, yeah, that was a bit long. <laughs> Hello. Uh, my name is Harold. Um, I went to USP, as I introduced earlier. The exact program I studied in is Bachelor of Networks and Security. And my reasoning is a bit different. I didn't exactly look at the bigger picture coming into that program. It was more for a personal reason, is that I didn't like the fact that um, technology was far away from us than other countries, bigger countries, and that we are bottlenecked by the fact that we don't have local expertise to advise or uh, stresses like that. So kind of similar, yet more selfish, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I, I that's that. <laughs> You're exactly. That's what's <laughs> they're thinking about. Okay. Well, if you guys think that way, then that's good for me. <laughs> but, yeah. um, but any other reason, uh, I love that Australia really pulled through with uh, funding, especially. Good yeah. deal. <laughs> Uh, Chris, uh, I studied at the uh, University of South Pacific. I'm under the, I studied um, uh, tourism, tourism and hospitality management, uh, Bachelor of Commerce. Uh, well, I, I wanted people to visit uh, Micronesia FSM. That's why I wanted to study that. that. That's my goal, to be able to put FSM out there, um, our culture, our attractions, so that's the main goal. So I went ahead and uh, studied tourism. So right now I'm with the uh, Office of National Government. I'm working with the uh, Division of Tourism, Office of Tourism, uh, with the uh, Product Development.
as you can see amongst the group here, pretty much anything that you do here can contribute to your country, uh, regardless of what field that may be for you. Um, so I, I guess I'll go, I'll start with the first question. Are you guys ready? <laughs> start sweating. <laughs> All right. So I guess I'll start with something fun. What is your most unforgettable experience while studying in this Australian Awards Scholarship in Australia as well as the Pacific? Okay, so as you all know, we use the pounds and inches. Yeah? Where in Australia they use the metric system. So I really almost failed. I was like a D student. I was really fail almost failing. So I asked the um, Australia, I forget what they call it, the, the agent that comes and the person that adopts the students. Is, yeah. And it was a she, she's really lovely, she's a grandmother. So, so I, I said to her, I'm failing, I can't do this. So she said, well, what, what's the problem? And so I told her, and so she said, oh, it's the metric system. It's just because you don't know, you're not dumb. It's just you don't know. Yeah, so when everyone went home, they went home for the holidays, like two months or yeah. something like that. I stayed in Australia all by my lonesome self with her, and she taught me the metric uh, system. So during the exam week, and you know, they post the grades on the, and I got 98, 98, 99, so for, because I finally figured it out. So I got um, statistics 98, I got, uh, first I was getting like 60 some, right? But then after that, I got 98 statistics, 98 um, uh, physics, 98, uh, what was that? All those science subjects, organic chemistry and cytotology, all of those things I got. So that was the greatest day of my life when I saw <laughs> So uh, I, when I saw that I was, you know, I was not dumb. I was just, you know. <laughs> so I think more, and, since we're on the topic now, I'm, I'm saying that maybe before, I'm just, it's just a suggestion, that these students, because they are also using pounds and inches, that they have maybe a one-week tutorial to learn more about metric system, how to plan for, because it's really hard when you go there and you know, because you, you feel dumb when you're not doing well. So that was the greatest day when I saw my grades. <laughs> oh, you yeah. have Um, for for me, it was basically we go to Fiji for the first time. Um, as you can see, what I'm wearing over there, they call it a sulu. Yeah, and I'd imagine the rest of the world, the first time they like, they think men are wearing skirts. <laughs> it's not as decorative, but it's the job done. So yeah, I go around holding back my laugh about people, but. Later on, only learned that it was an essential part of their culture. I had mine because my dad is part Fijian, but I didn't know that. Until then. <laughs> I don't know a lot of things about my own cultures. <laughs> so yeah, but it's also become something that I hold dear as well, due to the friends and relatives I've met in Fiji. And those are experiences that you guys will also, if you get the scholarship, you will go through. And it's a fun, it's a fun one. <laughs> yeah, for me, it's uh, the food, the dish, the food that actually, they actually prepared in Fiji. So, I, I don't know, like, I, I never tried the, the leaf or um, taro leaf. I never tried it, uh, and then I went to Fiji and I tried it, and it was so good. And I. Even the eel, I haven't tried eel. I went to Fiji, I tried eel for the first time and it was, yeah, it was great. It was a great experience. <laughs> it's unforgettable. <laughs> Thank you, I'll, I'll leave you with that, Mike. Um, no, I, I think that's a really important um, thank you uh, to our panel members. I think, you know, some of the culture shock uh, and just general shock of being in a new country um, is a really important one. Um, there are differences, especially in Australia. Um, it gets very cold in some parts of Australia, 
And then on the other side of the country, it gets very, very, very hot, like almost desert-like. So um, I, I think doing your research on your university, there was actually, in Australia, there's over 50 uh, university that you can explore um, and look at. And they all, depending on the universities that you're looking at, they specify in, or they specialize in um, oceans, in climate change, there's a lot happening um, in a Queensland University or Melbourne University and Tasmania as well. Um, some students are looking at finance, you know, building our economy is so important. Financial literacy is extremely important. So I think um, these are the kind of areas that we should also uh, look to support as well. And let's not, <laughs> thank you for bringing up the food because that's my favorite topic. Um, so in you know, Fiji, I, I, the, there's so many amazing food. Probably some of you, you guys are much more familiar uh, familiar with, but I mean, FSM has some of the best seafood in the world. You, it's not going to be as good <laughs> if you go to Australia. It's going to be much more expensive. But we have lots of vegetables and fruits if that helps. And cheese. I don't know if you guys are into cheese, but it is pretty amazing. So I'll, I think I'm going to ask um, the, uh, the next question because I think we've already uh, kind of started talking about that. Um, so my next question for the panel members will be, um, what will be your tip or advice for adjusting to life in Australia or Fiji? Oh, you okay, guys, you, can, you, go, you go first. <laughs> um, I would say, uh, for me, uh, the greatest tip is uh, choose your friends wisely. Um, you know, there's a lot of different people out there, um, but you choose your friends that become family and you're good. They will help you through all your struggles, through all your studies, uh, all the way to graduation. They'll be there for you. They're family. That's the tip of life. Um. Mine is uh, basically just be open-minded. It's a different culture, different country. You'll meet different people. Like what he said, choose your friends wisely, but be open-minded about it. They might have their reasoning as to why they are like that in a certain way, so you just have to be open. Thank you. So for me, I think, uh because Micronesians, it's really hard for us to say no. So if people invite us to go out or do stuff like that, we tend to say, okay, you know. But if you want to succeed, you have to say no. Sorry, I can't. I have homework. I have to study. And that's what it should be. You have to be faithful and loyal to your studies, just like you're faithful and loyal to a spouse. Eh? So that's how it is. You really have to be able, just like what this, they said, I, am, I, I can chime in with them and echo what they said, but it's important to be able to say no. And they will get mad at you, yes they will, but it's okay, because your study is the first priority, you went there to study, that's your spouse while you're in school, so you have to be faithful and loyal to your spouse. That's the only way to succeed, is to focus on your studies. So parties can come later. After you graduate, oh my gosh, you get party. But before that, you know, as the first uh, scholarship student, uh, I was terrified because the, they kept on telling me, if you fail, no other Micronesian student will, will come. So I was really scared. I never went out. I, ne I just studied seven days a week, I studied. So, uh, so uh, I thought, you know, you just have to focus. If you want to succeed, it's all about focus. Definitely. I think, I think we can all appreciate that studying is really, it's quite challenging for some of us. And sometimes life throws uh, some difficult uh, challenges along the way on top of our studies. So one of the great things with the Australia Award Scholarship is uh, we have a dedicated uh, support officer that um, you can talk to. You know, you know, life happens sometimes and things get hard. But having a dedicated uh, person that can talk you through, you know, maybe you might need counseling for a short time. 
uh, maybe you need some additional support for uh, your your education. So these are the kind of resources that we, you know, with the Australia Award, we want you to succeed. You know, we don't want to traumatize students. We want you to succeed. And you know, we, we've, at, we've provided um, all of our students with counseling services. Our institutions are there to support you succeed, to succeed. And with these, these are just kind of little elements. I think making sure that you're you're balancing your education as well as your life um, um, while you're studying abroad. Um, I'll ask one more question because I know you guys probably have a lot of other questions that you'd like to ask. So I'll ask one more question. I'll hand it over to uh, to the team. So the question to the panel members: What big difference has this scholarship made to you? How has the Australia Award scholarship changed your life? Okay. Uh, for me. Well, my family is poor, so <laughs> so when I see the advertisement, I went ahead and applied for the scholarship. Uh, I, I used to be like you guys, uh, like taking classes here at National and also pumping gas. So it changes my life from pumping gas to a manager at um, the at National with a lot of hard work and dedication. So. I really encourage uh, everyone today uh, to take up the challenge and go uh, study your dreams and fulfill them. So yeah, that's a really life changing. Um, for, it enabled me to finish my degree because um, uh, the different between me and the other two is that I actually started my scholarship halfway through my program. I didn't start from the beginning for four, four years. I actually, it was only the last two years I had started my scholarship. But it enabled me to finish um, with confidence as the first two years budgeting and all that and having a chip on my shoulder would you know, make me feel exhausted. And, that enabled me to finish with a piece of money. So, um, so I just want to <clears throat> respond to the question uh, in the way that I'm interpreting your question. So maybe it's the wrong answer, but um, for me, I, I look at it this way. So there's north and there's south. So Australia is obviously the south. And the other schools, I won't mention what, but they're above the north. But the thing I love about the scholarship in Australia, especially the North, is because, uh, I mean, South. In the North, when you learn, it's like, um, uh, what can I say? You, you're told what to think. You know, you go to lectures, and then you learn from the, um, you learn from textbooks. Whereas in Australia, you're taught how to think for yourself, because you do research. It's all about researching, so you tend to think outside the box. You know? So like, you do, yeah, that's, I think that's a big difference, because like, the other side, the North, they, they kind of look to the bosses and say, so what should I do, or like they're followers, then. Eh? Whereas if you look to those who went to school in Australia, New Zealand, sorry I have to mention New Zealand, because it's in the <laughs> South, and I also think in New Zealand, so if you look at people from that side, from the south, they tend to think for themselves. They think outside the box, yeah? So your answers or your solutions are not just what is in the textbook, because they're outdated, but they're current and recent and those that are trending now. So I think that's why I really appreciate this opportunity or that opportunity to study and uh, learn build my knowledge base to the Australian scholarship is the size and to think outside the box. And, and I think that's how we should do it. We're trying to create leaders, not followers. So as bosses or as, you know, any staff member, you should think outside the box. You shouldn't wait for your boss to tell you, do this or do that. You see, it needs to be done, do it. And so that's the difference. Sorry, maybe I didn't have to 
I'm sorry from a different uh, tangent. Thanks everyone. I think it's time to hand it over to you guys. Um, we'd like to hear from you. We've got the panel members here ready, ready to answer your your questions. Um, so we'll start with who has the first question for us. Uh, other than the metric system and the British English that we have to adjust into, can you please share some of the struggles that you went through and maybe talk about the living experience there? How was it like? Okay. So I'll start. Sure. So I was very fortunate because, uh, you know, I didn't. I didn't go out, so my budget was good. <laughs> I barely spent a cent uh, because I was just on campus. They provided food. But I think my friends from the other countries, they really struggled. And so I was like a budget officer. I would help them to uh, go to the bank and then uh, unlock their funding so that the funding would go directly to the uh, accommodations. Because they would go out night clubbing and and then they wouldn't pay for their accommodations, yeah? So that's one of the problems is that we're so used to mommy and daddy giving us money, so we don't know how to budget. So when we go there, we just blow it. We're so excited, we spend it on shoes, clothes, alcohol, and whatever drugs you, of your choice. And so you end up, you know, so I was like, people were constantly borrowing from me. And I think that's one of the things I was gonna suggest. It, well, actually, two things. One is the metric system tutorial, and the other one is budgeting. Because if you don't have money, if you're hungry and you don't have a place to live, because you were kicked out because you didn't pay, then of course the struggle becomes real. So I think those are two things that I would pose to uh, the, your team to look into. Uh, maybe they have some other ones besides budgeting and. Uh, System. Oh, oh, the other one, sorry, I forgot one. Somebody has to pick you up at the airport. Yes. Because I arrived, it was the first time I ever, you know. Yeah, yeah. So, and I was at the airport for like eight hours waiting for somebody to pick me up. It was already night time. Yeah, so that, I think that one, somebody has to yeah. pick you up. Yeah, to follow up on that is uh, communicate with the team on the ground. Like, Communicate well emails or if they gave you a number, you get down and get a SIM card and call and just establish communication and from there it should be easy. I was laughing because there was no internet back there. There was no, we didn't even know what Wi Fi was. <laughs> well, for me, the greatest one was uh, time management. Um, I know here at the college, like, just always class late and stuff like that. Over there, it's you're, you have to be on time. You have to have time for study, time for socialize, time for this and that. So how did I overcome that? I I wrote a, a to-do list. So like every day, I had a to-do list, like things needs to be done, and then I go ahead and follow that list. And it got me through. Yeah. Let me let me just add a little bit. Um, so uh, I am pleased to advise that we do we have made a lot of changes, including to uh, pick up. Um, so once you are a successful candidate, um, you will be introduced to your officer uh, to make sure that they get to know you well well before you land in country. Um, and, but we're very open to hearing more feedback because it's all about the experience for our students. So I'll hand it over for the next question. And can I add something, sorry. And if you successfully awarded the scholarship, so before you even uh, mobilize to your study country, um, the Australia Awards team actually here in FSM will conduct a pre-departure session, wherein it's a one or two days um, session. Um, you've been to that pre-departure session where it, you will be introduced, you know, what are your travel tips going to your um, um, study country, you know, how will you do budgeting, financing, 
Um, how will you manage to finance your um, your um, to MVP allowance? You also get the chance to um, have some sessions on um, like a child protection and everything, and also um, some also like there will be a session on alumni experiences too. So those are the kind of you know sessions that we normally offer for those who actually awarded this scholarship. So this is like a preparatory stage. So aside from that, you will also get the chance to uh, meet the what we call the regional scholarship team. Um, these are the staff from those universities who will actually assist you um, when you get to the study country. In Australia, it's called student contact officers. So these are dedicated team who actually you can bug every day with your questions, you know, when you get to the country, where am I gonna go, where's the van, where can I buy this? So these are actually under Australia Awards. We have a dedicated team for each of the university to assist our scholars, okay? So just take note of that. And, and we course, definitely encourage you to talk to them. Uh, that's what they're paid for. <laughs> and so those who are here. Pick up, yeah, they will arrange it before, you know, you can even get to the country. Visa assistance, how will you lodge your study permit? They will be the ones who assist you in So the key message is we arm you with as much information as possible before you even leave uh, FSM. And these are mandatory uh, attendance too. Shall I hand over one more? Do we have another question? No, uh, but to find time, like in November, uh, that's when the holidays start, after exams. Then we come home and we stay home and we'll come here and we get back. Is we still providing that for regional, Australia? Regional return? Yeah, yeah. Yes. Oh, see? We yeah. can come home we, for two, three months. Yeah, de depending on your um, study field, um, we also make sure that you've got you get to see your family. Um, mental health care is really important to us. We want to make sure that you're not away from your loved ones for too long. So one actually entitlement for Australia Awards um, is you have this reunion travel entitlement. When, as discussed by Michelle, um, it's like uh, depending on your study program, whether it's like four years, two years, or five years. If you finish a year, You'll get to an entitlement of a uh, return ticket back home to see your family like during the holidays. And then you can come back to the country again for the next holiday. But that only can be, um, you know, you're only entitled to that one if you finish up like a, a year. And then it depends, you know, what if you're, of course, if it's satisfactory or whatever, then how you perform in school also, you know, you will look into that one. But if you completed your study, then you will be able to get a million dollars. Right? Based on your experience. <laughs> Okay, good job. How about in Australia? 
Sydney? What school in Sydney? Okay. <laughs> University of Sydney. Oh. Oh, it's a 50 50 chance to get around that. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. When, when is the deadline for submission of application for Australia World Scholarship? 30? 30 of this month. 30 of April 2024. What time? 11.59 p.m. <laughs> Don't forget that. Thank you. Thank you. Please this for Thank you. The same here and then the gentleman back there. All right. So, they're really the same. All right. Okay. So, let's maybe last one. Okay. So, this is a question about our alumni. So, we have the opportunity and we're honored for Dr. Lucille to be here. If you're really listening, what study program um, did you take um, in Australia? In Australia, Dr. Lucia. Bachelor or? Oh, the bachelor. The bachelor. Marine? Applied science. Good job. Oh, sorry. No, there was some there. It was a half one. I'm not sure if I count All right. Okay, so um, I'll pass over again to Max Rochelle to do some closing remarks. Alright everyone, I just want to say a warm kailangan uh, to everyone for joining us here today as well as those online. And thank you also to our lovely panel members. Um, it's been so lovely to have you guys here um, to talk through your experience as well. Um, uh, just for your for everyone's awareness, we will be doing these information sessions uh, moving forward. Uh, and we'll be uh, looking to do them in other states uh, in the next, uh, just to kind of share, share the love. <laughs> All right, well, thank you, everyone. And thank you as well to Rowan and the team here and also the COM. Thanks so much for uh, allowing us here to, uh, to, to do this information session. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we prepared some light refreshments for anybody. So we have, you know, stay um, a few minutes and then um, enjoy the refreshments. Thank you. Oh, sorry, thank sorry, you. Sorry. I'd like to speak on behalf of the Australian Thank you guys for the opportunity. Australian scholarship, Australia and our scholarship. Immensely benefit at the sun. So we thank you. And uh, thank you for coming. Thank you.